Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 27 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial video, I'm going to talk about glob, G-L-O-B, to read multiple files into Python. And why do we need to do this? Well, you're not doing image processing on a single image most of the time. You want to apply whatever you do on the single image on a whole bunch of uh, other images. The way you do that is by applying, by reading all these files into Python and then applying certain function to them or certain operation to these. So let's uh, dive into Spider to see how we can do this operation, how we can actually load these multiple images and how Glob can definitely help us in identifying all the file names that need to be loaded. So for that, let's switch to Spider IDE. And as usual, I have uh, uh, some uh, piece of code pre-written, so we save some time. But uh, before jumping in, let me go ahead and talk about Glob. Glob actually came from, I think, the old Unix world from 20, 30 years ago. If you've used Unix machines, you probably recognize this. And what glob actually does is, I mean, if you do glob.glob, .glob, it's going to go to whatever location that I'm going, I'm pointing at, and then returns a list of all the file names at that location. So for example, I am in a, my code is located in this directory uh, right here. And within this directory, I have a folder, a directory called images. When I open it, I have a few images and some subfolders. If I open test images, there are some images. Now this line is going to go in here and fetch all the image names uh, for me. So uh, in the form of a list. And then I'm going to print this list. Now go ahead and run this. So let's go ahead and run this. And it's actually giving me uh, a list here. So if you actually look up here, file list, okay? So this is a list, a Python list of 10 entries because I have 10 images. And then here is the entire list. And as you can see, the values include my folder name, the subfolder name, and the file name. So this is how I can actually uh, go ahead and use this to load my images. And how do we do that? So let's go ahead and uh, 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 let's go ahead and do that actually. Let's, uh, let me copy the next set of lines and explain it line by line again. So now let's load each, again, let me separate this so the code doesn't look intimidating. Now let's load each file at a time, right? So to do that, you know, uh, hopefully you watched my fur loop tutorial, okay? Anytime you have a list, you can use fur to actually go through each entry in a list and then perform certain action on that entry. Again, please, if you haven't, please go back and watch my for a loop tutorial. So we're going to use exactly that to go through each file or each entry in our list and then do certain actions. So what are we going to do again? So I created an empty list here because I want to store the images when I read it into a list. Remember, this is just a name. This is just a file name. This is not the image. This is not a NumPy array. Our images are all NumPy arrays, right? It's a two-dimensional or multi-dimensional uh, values. So, but this my list, I'm going to store the images I'm reading into here, and hopefully it makes sense in a minute. So here I'm defining a variable called path, and my path is images slash test images slash the actual path to where my images are located. Now, for file in glob.glob .glob path, meaning for each element in this entry, okay, what do you want to do? Print file name. Let's actually do up to here, that's it. Okay, let's only run these lines. Now you see how I unwrapped individual file names from the list. Here it's printing image number one, which is that, image number two, image number three. Now it's actually printing each one. So it's just printing it. I don't wanna just print it, I want to read that file. And how do we read it? In this case, I'm using OpenCV to read it. So my A, a variable I'm assigning is equal to OpenCV or CV2.imread that file. So for file number one, it reads it. File number two, it reads it. File number three, it reads that image. Now, if you keep reading it, the next time it goes to the next file, it overwrites the previous one. So I don't want that to happen. That's exactly why I created my list up here. So I can basically say, hey, to the list, go ahead and append the values that you're going to get from A. Which means when 
the first image gets loaded, the one that says T01, it gets loaded as my NumPy array and added to my list. And it goes back to the second image and adds it to my list and so on. So let's actually run these lines so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Nothing to see here, no output, right? But if you go up here and look at my list, my list is a list of 10 items. What are these items? Each item is a NumPy array, which is our image. So this is exactly how you can read images and store them. If this is, if you're very new to coding, I uh, can understand that this can be a bit confusing, but please practice this a couple of times so it becomes uh, less intimidating. You'll get comfortable uh, eventually when you work with more images, okay? So now that I have my list, I can just say, hey, show me the second uh, or the third entry, right? I mean, it starts with zero, zero, one, two. So show me the third image from my list. That's all I'm doing, plt.imshow. Again, I covered this plt.imshow in the last couple of tutorials, so you know what that means. Show me this image. So let's go ahead and plot it. So there you go. That's my uh, image number uh, uh, three here. So this is the image we are actually plotting. So if I plot uh, image number, let's say my list nine, now we should be having a look at this ninth image. So this is the image number. Uh, this looks exactly the same again. So let's actually run. Um, let's do image number zero first, okay? So there is our, uh, looks like all of our images are very similar. I was trying to see the difference, so you can actually see the difference right there, okay? This cell looks different right over there. Uh, so right now we are looking at image number one. So this is how you can actually load multiple images. So in the next exercise, let's actually do something to these images. So it hopefully clarifies any, any doubts that you may have. So for that, let me go ahead and copy this piece of code and then erase all the code from here so it makes it a clean slate, okay? Let's, again, I zoomed in so the text looks uh, legible when you're watching this video, but let's again go through line by line. So these two, now you know what it is. Import CV2 so we can re uh, read the images, glob so we can extract the file names, and path, I'm defining where to find the files, and my image number equals to one. I'm starting an iterator, so you'll understand why I'm starting this iterator. The reason I'm doing this is after processing, I wanna save the image back. And when I'm saving it, I want to add them uh, uh, you know, as image one, image two, image three. So to separate them, I just started an iterator, okay? You'll, uh, hopefully things make sense in a minute. And this part we already looked at. For file in glob.glob path, print the file name. We don't need to print it for now because we looked at it enough times. And also read the file. We know we already looked at it. Previously, after reading the file, we added this to an empty list. But instead of doing that, let's actually come down here. Again, I commented some part of this code. You can just look at it. You can type it yourself and you can kind of repeat this. But let's process each image. So let's uh, let me bring this up so you can see it. Okay, so I'm defining another variable called C where we are changing the color of A from BGR to RGB, that's it. From blue, green, and red to red, green, and blue, which is basically swapping the red and blue channels, okay? We looked at this in our OpenCV tutorial, but this is the simple operation we're doing. So what are we trying to do? Look at each image in this folder and convert our images from blue green, red to red, green, and blue, okay? And then write them back. So how are we doing that? cv2.imwrite. Again, please watch my tutorial on how to read and write images. So cv2.imwrite and write them into a folder called test images, which is the same folder here, and save them as color underscore image plus string image number, which means image number for the first one, the image number would be one. For the second one, image number would be two, three, four, five. Why would it be one, two, three, four, five? Because every time we go through this loop, I'm adding my image number by one. Again, please have a look at my fur loop tutorial. This part has been covered, how to increment. So all I'm doing here is 
to my color image, I'm adding that number and I converted that into string because I cannot add a, uh, an integer to string. They all need to be strings. When you add strings, they're concatenated together. So this would be color image onejpeg That's all I'm trying to do here. Color image onejpeg I'm saving my C, this. And then I added like uh, imshow so we can have a look at it on the screen. Uh, and uh, uh, each image will be displayed for one second and then it'll be uh, closed, okay? So let's run this code. And uh, our images actually, sorry, our images are opening up and they're closing right there. There you go. Each image opened and closed, okay? And if I actually go to my uh, uh, folder there, now we have 10 different images, right? The first 10 images are uh, blue. So for example, let me open the 10th image here. These are uh, nuclei in blue. And the next one, the nuclei is in red. That's because we swapped the blue, blue and red channels right here. So this is how you can automate a process to multiple images. If this is again the first time, you may find it a bit confusing, but all you need to learn from this tutorial is using glob.glob .glob to extract the file names. And once you have the file name extracted, you can open them, you can do a whole bunch of things once you open this. And that's exactly what we did as part of this fur loop. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you an extension of this topic, but instead of glob, we are going to use os.listdir. They do exactly the same thing, but it's uh, important for you to know what it is so you can pick which one you think uh, uh, will work for you. Thank you very much.